Well, I went on a really interesting journey of discovery about maybe 10, 11 years ago. I was working in and around China in the mining sector with the state authorities on mining. And I discovered that China had this really interesting, rather secretive industry called the rare earth industry. And that this industry actually was something that people in China were passionate about having a very big future. It actually is something which is really part of the Chinese thinking. Deng Xiaoping very famously said in the early 90s, the Middle East has oil, we have rare earths. And of course, nobody's really understood why he made that pronouncement, but it was a prescient announcement. What I found out was that these particular special metals called rare earths were underpinning technology which we use every single day. I say to people, we are as addicted to rare earths as we are to oil, we just don't know it. And everything you do in terms of colour television screens, in terms of the car you drive and its emissions, in terms of your mobile phone, in terms of your day-to-day -day interface with technology, has some aspect of rare earth which it uses. And so I got very, very interested in the idea that China actually dominated this huge uh, and important industry, not well known in the West at all. The only other occurrence of rare earths in the Western world had been in California, a mine that was opened in the 1950s, which provided actually europium for colour television screens when colour television screens were new. So it hadn't been focused on very much in the, in the Western world, but technology was dependent on it. And I thought, this is a really interesting uh, opportunity, really, um, because China being so dominant, surely there are a lot of companies in the rest of the world who rely on this stuff so much that they would like to break away from the Chinese dominance in the rare earth system. So if we can find a really good deposit of rare earth somewhere else in the world on which we can build what we call an integrated supply chain of rare earth, that's to say from the mine all the way through to the product which the end user needs, surely we can get a significant market share because the use of rare earth isn't going away. The use of rare earths is really core to some social trends which are really important uh, for the future. Energy efficiency. No one's going to go backwards on energy efficiency. We need more energy efficiency. Well, whether it's uh, hybrid cars or uh, wind turbine power, uh, energy efficiency is embedded in, in is requires the use of many applications where rare earths is embedded in, in that application. Uh, environmental protection. Nobody in their right mind is going to say, let's go backwards on catalytic converters and let's remove catalytic converters from the system. Well, catalytic converters rely on rare earths as one of many examples of technology, which makes the world cleaner as a function of the rare earths uh, supply chain. Digitization, I love my iPad. The iPad only exists because some of the rare earths are there that enable some of the technology that drives that iPad. I like my BlackBerry, I'm addicted to it. And every time it vibrates, I think there's a little ne bit of neodymium that's causing that particular motor to drive. So it's around us everywhere. So the vision of Linus was always been to create an integrated supply of rare earths from mine through to end user, as in the big chemical companies and the big industrial companies that use rare earths to develop the applications we all use every day. And it's taken us 10 years but we've done that. We are now ready for production. We are now going to be the largest rare earth plant in the world, able to supply the highest quality and cleanest rare earths to the rest of the world uh, to meet this growing demand.